So what I want to do here is have a discussion about the anti-life equation from DC Comics. And what I'm hoping is that at the end of all this, you'll have an understanding of what the equation is and how it ties into the overall events of DC Rebirth and Dark Side War. So the first mention of the anti-life equation in DC Comics came with Jack Kirby's fourth world epic and the Forever People. To sidetrack for a second, while Jack Kirby was best known for his work in creating the X-Men, Thor, Spider-Man, and the rest of Marvel's original lineup in the 1960s, because his contributions were continually marginalized leading into the early 1970s, in 1971, he left Marvel Comics to pursue work in DC. During this time, with most of DC's landscape consisting of Earthbound events and with his only real exploration coming in the form of Superman and Green Lantern, Jack Kirby looked to expand the universe of DC by launching the fourth world as a self-contained continuity similar to Marvel's Ultimate Universe from the 2000s and filled with characters of Kirby's own creation and design. While these characters did cross over in stories like Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen and with Superman directly, the idea behind this was to have them exposed to DC's larger audience as a jumping off platform in an effort to better ensure a solid start from the series. Centering largely on the worlds of New Genesis and Apocalypse as representations of good and evil respectively, the Forever People were established as inhabitants of New Genesis, working to overthrow Darkseid and his attempts to rule the universe. Taking place in issue number 5 during a conflict between the Forever People and Desaad, an agent of Darkseid, the anti-life equation was established as being akin to an energy source which someone could tap into, allowing them to dominate the wills of any and all sentient races. As a result, the anti-life equation was given its name owing to the idea that a person without the ability to think and function for themselves wasn't really alive. To this end, with the forever people being monitored by both the Sod and Darkseid during the skirmish, this particular comic represents the first comic book appearance by which Darkseid's interest in the anti-life equation emerged. However, in 2001's Martian Manhunter Vol. 2, Issue Number 33, as part of DC's efforts to flesh out John Jones' character outside of the Justice League, the three-part series In My Life by John Ostrander detailed the history of John's race in relation to the anti-life equation, establishing that at some point in the past, the Apocalyptean General Kanto visited Mars on behalf of Darkseid. Speaking with John Jones directly and learning of the Martian's life philosophy, it was revealed that the Martians believed all life was sacred and in conjunction with their understanding of science and mathematics, formed the life equation as a mathematical proof of free will. Coming to the conclusion that all things in existence have an antithesis, Darkseid came to the belief that the life equation must have an opposite of its own in the form of the anti-life equation and exist as the opposite of free will. Now while the origin of the life equation would receive a retcon in the pages of Jeff John's Green Lantern Godhead, this revelation in Martian Manhunter Volume 2 Issue Number 33 served to provide the idea that from that point going forward, Darkseid had consistently searched for the anti-life equation eventually leading into Forever People issue number 5 and his first witness of its power. Following this, Jack Kirby's continuation of the Forever People story led into issue number 8 and the introduction of a man named Billion Dollar Bates. Possessing extreme wealth due to his natural ability to access and use the anti-life equation, while this natural ability was never fully explained, Bates had formed a cult around himself with the intention of using his power and wealth for world domination. As a result, while the Forever People did battle against Bates, his ability to harness the anti-life equation made him a direct target for Darkseid. Leading to the arrival of Darkseid himself in pursuit of Bates, in his attempts to kill the Forever People and secure the equation, Bates was used as a human shield against Darkseid's Omega Beams, killing Bates in the process and leaving Darkseid without the ability to use the equation. Now because Jack Kirby's time in DC was met with strict editorial control and the inability to freely expand the fourth world concept in accordance with his own vision, where he had vacated his position and returned to Marvel, the fourth world itself was rolled over into the main DC continuity with various writers tasked in expanding on the concept themselves. Coming in 2001 with Walt Simonson's 25 issue series Orion which focused on the escapades of Darkseid's biological son, while the first five issues were simply reprints of existing stories from the Gates of Apocalypse, in addition to the backup features titled Tales of the New Gods and expanding on their own world, Walt Simonson established that following Bates' death, Darkseid had made a series of clones looking to absorb the entirety of the anti-life equation from them and seize control of reality. Coming into conflict with Orion who came to view the anti-life equation as a means to bend the will of all sentient life in favor of peace, where his goal was achieved and Earth became a utopia of sorts, the efforts of Orion were abandoned owing to the idea that peace had to be achieved naturally as opposed to external means. As a result, the anti-life equation fell back into obscurity, making a series of small appearances in DC Comics 
leading up to the launch of DC's Final Crisis. Centering on the idea of making the heroes aware of the multiverse's existence following its destruction during 1985's Crisis on Infinite Earths and its return during 2005's Infinite Crisis, because the equation existed as a mathematical proof, writer Grant Morrison used the technological age as a means to realize Darkseid's goal of dominating the Earth and that with computers functioning based on mathematical equations in binary code, the anti-life equation was distributed over the internet as a meta-commentary of society's reliance on technology and its intertwining in everyday life. Where the final crisis event itself was a massive intermingling of different plot threads which had been left dangling following the conclusion of Crisis on Infinite Earths leading up to the modern day, with regards to the anti-life equation, its distribution across the internet allowed Darkseid to seize control of Earth by turning various heroes and villains into his own agents, transforming Earth into a new base of operations in his ongoing war against New Genesis. And to this end, where the final crisis event saw the destruction of Darkseid at the hands of Superman using a wishing machine, Grant Morrison's depiction of the equation maintained its historical function as a mathematical proof showing the futility of life, meaning that those who were exposed to it experienced a kind of awakening and completely succumbed to the belief that life is pointless, stripping them of their will to live and turning them into slaves to the will of whoever holds the equation. Having said that, because the origin of the anti-life equation had never been explored whether due to a lack of desire or editorial control, when DC launched the New 52 as a line-wide reboot of their various titles, the anti-life equation received the same treatment. During this time, the early line of New 52 related titles maintained much of the equation's function prior to the start of the New 52, but because fan reception to the reboot and subsequent events like Convergence and DCU led to the idea of DC Rebirth, Chief Creative Officer Jeff Johns retooled the Anti-Life Equation in its entirety, tying it directly to the origin of Anti-Monitor and the Anti-Matter Universe. Where the previous school of thought held that the Anti-Monitor was simply a plot device created for Crisis on Infinite Earths and never to really be used again, Jeff Johns established that much like the actions of Green Lantern character Krona in peering into the origin of the normal DC Universe, spawning the Life Equation and giving birth to all things in existence, the Anti-Monitor existed as a man named Mobius and peered into the origin of the Antimatter universe, spawning the Anti-Life Equation. Becoming imbued with its power, with the New 52 operating as a reboot, all previous information and events within the pages of comics that pertain to the Anti-Life Equation were discarded, meaning that chronologically, Mobius had discovered the Anti-Life Equation, bonded with it, and Darkseid had simply spent his entire life looking to access it. Leading into the events of Darkseid War by way of Darkseid's daughter Grail looking to kill her father with the help of Mobius, while Act 1 saw the heroes coming together and Act 2 saw Darkseid's death, Act 3 and 4 focused on the fallout, Mobius' transformation, and Grail. Now for this bit here, I'd like you to pay particular attention since this will be relevant for our discussions on DC Rebirth. But with Mobius undergoing a transformation and ridding himself of the anti-life equation, it had passed to Grail, whose motives beyond Darkseid's death remained ambiguous but bonded the equation to Steve Trevor, a human ally to the Amazons and occasional love interest to Wonder Woman. Using Steve to battle Mobius himself and Wonder Woman directly, this conflict was short-lived in that with Earth-3's Lois Lane becoming pregnant and giving birth to a child while functioning as a villain using the moniker Superwoman and imbued with all the powers of Superman, Grail rightly made the assumption that the baby would possess vast powers akin to Superman. Stripping Steve Trevor of the anti-life equation and bonding it to Superwoman's baby, Grail transformed the child into a reborn Darkseid and used it to wage war against Earth's heroes, leading to a massive battle that nearly laid waste to the planet. At its conclusion, Wonder Woman had used her lasso of truth to calm the mind of Grail, removing her rage and allowing her to disperse the anti-life equation. Now with regards to the future of DC Rebirth and the equation itself, because Rebirth is designed to bring together the best of the New 52 and pre-New 52 continuities, it's unknown if the equation will return and in what capacity. But because of its ties to the launch of DC Rebirth and its role in previous events, it would stand to reason that even if only as a plot device, the Anti-Life Equation will likely make a return within the larger DC continuity. With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end and let me know whether or not this explanation on the Anti-Life Equation made sense to you. I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.